Thank you. I actually just have this one very complicated slide in my presentation. Um, I'll, I'll take it from where Michael uh, left about, you know, how do you take your company from basics to marketing, right? Uh, and I'll talk about that because uh, the company that I uh, work at and Michael um, Christoph had visited me a few, a few days ago, 10 days ago. So it's a company that's been growing at a very fast pace. So in the last four years, we've been adding uh, the worth of the company each year to it. So it's, you know, so it doubles itself every, every year. It's been increasing its global footprint also uh, very rapidly. Now what's happened is that from being a very traditional Indian manufacturing company, it's grown to a global business conglomerate. And that's where the need for sustaining its success comes in. Um, the, we, two years ago, we brought in a new CEO. Uh, he was the number two at Larson and Two Bros with a lot of you know, global uh, experience. He brought in the CFO as well within six months, who was at ABB, uh, who was the global CFO at ABB. I moved in to India as well as the company uh, about seven months ago. So as you can see, the company's changed. There's a lot of management um, you know, transition that's happened. So uh, when we set up, uh, when we, so we set up the business sustainability division altogether, like when, when, I, when I joined the company seven months ago. And uh, what we did was first think about you know, these three things, conceive. Um, you know, we've heard today in various presentations that sustainability, the three factors are social, environment, economic. But um, you know, every organization has its own definition of sustainability. And um, what worked for us was that we took um, a very inward-looking um, inquiry into what sustainability meant for our company. So that meant uh, brainstorming sessions with the top management. It also meant questionnaires to the people on the shop floor, on the factory floor, in the mines. Uh, we are into steel, power, and mining. I'll come to that probably later. But then, um, so we took a very, very inward-looking kind of a look into what does sustainability mean to us. So, and, and, and you know, there it can really range from compliance to strategy to innovation. So, for any company which is actually getting, you know, if you want to embed. Um, your sustainability from raw material production to production to marketing, which essentially what uh, LCA is about. You know, I think it's really, really important to spend a lot of time in how do you conceive sustainability within, you know, within your company. There are plenty of definitions out there, textbook definitions theory, but I think that's something. If you do that right, if you if if you go f if you actually um, you know, have a more collaborative approach, which a lot of us have been talking about, but how do you conceive? You already, the half the battle is already won for your implementation. So do take that really seriously. The second bit, bit is cost. And by cost, what I meant was how do you actually place sustainability within your organization? So how do you, you know, like a mold, how do you actually place it? And that's so important because um, at least in developing countries, um, you know, typically sustainability is put into one corner because it's, it's not always um, you know, revenue generating and then often it's a, it's a cost center, right? So it's, it's, it's all the good things to do kind of uh, you know, uh, division. So, but then um, there, there are very creative ways of how you can overcome that and how do you actually place it in the center of your business, into your core business, so that sustainability itself is sustainable, right? So how we did it was that, uh, well, physically speaking, like my office is in between the CEOs and the CFOs. That just helps a lot. So it's from 8.30 in the morning till late night, every decision that is taken, the business decisions, the sustainability concept is right there integrated from financials to operations. That helps incre Im Im you know, uh, immensely. Um, the other thing is in the org chart itself, at least you know, what helped us was that um, there is the business sustainability division, but then I'm also part of the CEO's office. And I also report in to the owner of the company. These are very little nitty gritty details, but I'm telling you it helps me immensely. Because then the, I, I heard people talk about also getting the buy-in, right? That from the top management, from the CEO, how do you actually convince? Sometimes you're on one end of the spectrum, the CEO wants something else. 
But you know, it's a two-way thing because you've got to also understand what the business needs are. Only then are you talking the same language and then there is consensus. So um, for any of you who are looking at um, you know, establishing or strengthening your sustainability divisions, um, what worked really for, for, for us was that uh, not just have a department, but then also link it up in the org chart to the CEO's office or to, the, you know, to, to, to any other major uh, department. So then there is like, a, it's, it's multitasking in a way, but then um, there's a lot of overlap in what you do in your, what you do as well. The other part about the cast bit is that how do you build up the team, right? Now, when you're uh, looking at the life cycle um, sustainability of the products that you're making, it's a full range of things that, that, that you're looking at, especially if you're a large business conglomerate into like producing various different uh, uh, products. So uh, one uh, good practice, which at least um, you know, uh, I found very helpful, was to have a very bottom-up team. So, every, so we, ha we have sustainability officers embedded in every site location that we have, in every factory that we have, uh, in every mines that we, you know, that, that, that we own. Um, and so that ensures that all the charts and the theories and the you know, plans that we have are not just um, sourced bottom up, because I, I, I get my ideas from the sustainability officers placed everywhere, but also for the implementation, which is super important, right? So then, so when, when you have a plan in place, you have the buy-in already for this year because that's, you know, uh, on an everyday basis, that's how you're working it out. But also to implement it, you have people on the ground from your raw materials to your production, to your marketing divisions. You have people over there who can actually roll it out for you. Uh, so how you cast and how you mold it within, uh, within your organization is, uh, is extremely important um, to, 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 act, to take sustainability forward within, your, uh, you know, within different uh, parts of uh, production. The third bit is collaborate, and um, it's, it's actually nice to see that in all, you know, uh, Stefan, we were saying this also, that in almost all our, in all our presentations, the one thing that's really come out is how important collaboration is uh, for, for actually, you know, taking forward life cycle assessments and then implementation of it uh, for sustainable production. Um, and it's internal as well as external collaboration. I mean, one thing is that you have to have a lot of friends within the company uh, to be able to, and, and you know, to, to be able to get their buy-in. Because um, just giving people like a laundry list of best practices just doesn't, uh, you know, doesn't work. Uh, we, you know, we, we use the Sophie software. We, you know, uh, one of the first things within, I think, three weeks of of me joining uh, the company was that we had PE on board and then we got uh, the Sophie software, you know, um, uh, started off, the project started off to build it up. Um, but then after that, after the data comes in, what, you know, then you've got to take the necessary steps, right, to, 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 cor to make the corrections and then to, 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 to you know, take things forward. Um, and so internally, I mean, there is, you know, you really need a lot of collaboration um, internally. There are various things which work for us, I, you know, you can have a little board for yourself, like a sustainability board within the company where you can uh, have different uh, business leaders, internal business leaders come in and you can discuss with them. Uh, it's very important to not just uh, show them the data and, uh, you know, flag uh, things that they're doing wrong, but uh, instead let it come from them. So you show them the data and it's so useful to have a data-backed um, you know, um, dialogue or, or discussion with people. It's just, it's, it changes things completely when you have that. Um, not just internal data, but also benchmarking, which, uh, you know, uh, with Sophie we are able to do as well. So to benchmark your own, what, what, you know, your own data to what other companies in the industry are doing. Uh, and then based on that, you can set up internal targets. Um, but what's, uh, what's working for us is that let it come from them, um, you know, keep the friends in there. I mean, because, you know, if you, if you show them the data and red flags here and there, often they kind of, um, you know, they, they kind of turn hostile, whatever. Um, and also externally, I think uh, it's very important to showcase things that are working 
within your company for, uh, um, you know, for sustainable production, for instance. So to give you an example, um, well, I, I didn't want to, but uh, that's our company. This, that was actually the advertisement at uh, Davos this year. That's my number that they put. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, this is, you know, this is how we are going about uh, ensuring that sustainability is present in different parts of you know, of, of, of the company. And, um, you know, w one of the, uh, uh, one of the ways of making, uh, so we, we're in the business of steel power uh, and infrastructure, apart from a lot of other smaller businesses, our main businesses are that, it's about $3.6 billion uh, company. Uh, and we're present in a couple of continents as well. Um, so one of the ways of making uh, clean steel um, is through uh, natural gas. Now, natural gas is quite rare. So another way to do it, which is environment friendly, which is coal gasification. So you essentially, you know, in, uh, it's, it's in a nutshell, it's you use very low grade coal, which otherwise would not be uh, very useful. And then there is a technology of coal gasification through which you can make DRI uh, steel. So we are the only company in the world, the only people in the world who are actually doing that. And the, the technology of coal gasification um, came from South Africa, that's in Sasol, that's the only place which are doing it, but then but we took, that, took it from there, innovated it in-house, three years, uh, you know, we, uh, we incubated it and used it for making steel. It's a fantastic example of having more environment-friendly, you know, steel production. Um, and also all the byproducts that comes out of that are recycled into the process or else it's sold in the market. So it's very, why I'm talking about this is because it's very important to showcase some of these best practices. So some of the things which are working for sustainable steel and power product and process innovation, you've got to showcase this. So uh, the United Nations Global Compact, uh, we spoke with them and talked to them about this fantastic, you know, more environment friendly way of uh, steel production. And then they've included that in the 10 best practices uh, in India um, for sustainability. Uh, Harvard University flew down on the 18th of January to also do a case study on that. So it's not just internal collaboration and figuring out these best practices, but also showcasing them uh, so that other companies also join, you know, the bandwagon. And and I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, it does. That's that's I think a great way to also build a strong brand uh, globally as well. So uh, I think there's a long journey to go from getting the data on your you know, life cycle assessment to then making sure that you have the buy-in within the company as well as you know, externally. That depends on how you're placed within the company, how, your, how, how, how sustainability is uh, perceived and uh, cast within, you know, within the organization. And if you're able to do that well, I think there's, uh, you know, there's a lot you can do in terms of building a great brand. You can actually do something very tangible in terms of environment protection. Um, social commitments, um, and then apart from that, you could definitely, you know, go into revenue generating models of uh, of of, of uh, you know social social change. So yeah, that's my little presentation. <laughs>